There is definitely something to be said for that old saying, uh, right place, right time. Dr. Oz was absolutely in the right place at the right time. Although, arguably, it was a very wrong time for a passenger um, uh, who was at Newark Airport on Monday night. He was at baggage claim when he suddenly collapsed. And luckily, Dr. Oz was also traveling uh, through Newark Airport and was standing nearby. So you know that moment where they go, is they there a doctor yell, in the house? Is there a doctor in the house? Well, Dr. Oz was in the house and he stepped up to save this man's life um, by doing some things that, you know, that uh, obviously doctors are trained to do, but uh, you just, I wonder how often this happens. Well, look, let's just find out. Let's, let's bring, bring in the hero in. right now. Absolutely. Uh, we can't afford to license Mariah Carey's hero, but if we could, <laughs> Dr. Oz, we would play it for you. Uh, welcome back to TMZ Live. Good to see you. You're kind to have me on. And before you go any further, I, although I, I, I want to, you know, thank, of course, the people who taught me how to do heart surgery and the like, but the Port Authority, the Newark Port Authority police were stellar. I mean, they really stepped up and they provided every bit of instrumentation, tools, CPR support feasible. And I'm just so happy this gentleman is doing okay today. So walk us through uh, what happened, where you were, how you saw it, and what happened. So I, we, the flight had been delayed, so I was with my wife and one of my daughters, and I left my the daughter with the luggage to go get you know the stuff that was coming off the carousel, and she about five seconds later yelled, "Daddy, Daddy, uh, come quick!" So I, you know, my first instinct is she must have dropped my suitcase. I mean, how could you call me five seconds after I left her? And when I turned around, I realized what had happened—a fairly uh, big burly gentleman uh, who ended up being 61 years of age, which is close to my age, had collapsed, fallen on his face. And his wife was standing next to him, still processing what was going on. So I ran back because when you fall on your face, you, it means you've lost consciousness. You, oftentimes it means you just had sudden death. That's what it uh, translates to because your heart stops beating within three seconds, you lose consciousness and you don't control what happens afterwards. So uh, this gentleman, in fact, uh, was unconscious. Uh, unresuscitatable, you know, I, I couldn't arouse him. And more importantly, I could not get a pulse anywhere on him and he wasn't breathing and there was saliva, uh, foam swirling out of his mouth, which is, these are all horrible signs. He'd also turned the color of an eggplant, that purplish color that oh, anyone wow. in the medical field wow. recognizes as a morbid <laughs> appearance. So the Port Authority police had come around, thankfully. And so I had one of the gentlemen there start doing the CPR for me and I controlled his airway, which means you pull on the chin, you open up um, the space that lets air come through the mouth into the lungs. And there had a little plastic bag that you use, it's called an Ambu bag, that you can get pressure on the face with this bag and actually ventilate uh, air into the person mm -hmm. forcibly, like if you're breathing in their mouth. And right. uh, at, at that point, um, we'd asked for a defibrillator and thankfully again, the Newark airport, they have them all over the place. So there was a, there's one, the def defibrillator came in, slapped it on his chest and these machines are automatic. They'll, they'll diagnose if the patient's dead, if the person's dead, they'll shock them. If they're not dead, they won't shock them. And so it pretty quickly figured out what I had discerned, which is there was no pulse, this man was dead. And it shocked them at the highest power possible. And it worked, I mean, like out of a movie. I didn't realize that. So the defibrillators, so you don't have to set like the, the, the voltage or anything. It knows based on the patient's condition, what voltage to use. It's automatic. That's why people should never wow. be afraid of using them. It can't go wrong. It's going to read whatever it's supposed to. If your heart's flatline or if it's a very irregular oh. beat that can't work, then it'll shock it. Anything else, it'll wait and it'll tell you actually. It talks to you. It says, you know, clear, uh, re regain rhythm, you can resume CPR. It'll tell you what to do. So if you don't know what to do, it, the small, smartest thing is slap those pads on someone's chest. And it takes, you know, 10 minutes to learn the basics, a little longer to get good at it, but the basics so you can save someone's life. In any case, when it shocked them, I, you know, I, I was sort of first exhilarated that we got his heart rhythm back. I kept his airway open because he wasn't breathing. I was still worried about his uh, un being unable to breathe and, and aspirating at the same time because his mouth was full of all this foam. So I took a piece of plastic that we often will use uh, to open up his airway. Uh, and I put that in his mouth and just kept pressure for 10 minutes until EMS came. By then he was starting to come about. He was clearly breathing his color as soon as he got his heart back, immediately began to pink up. Wow. And by the time I put him on the stretcher to take him to the ambulance, he knew he was at Newark Airport. Um, and, you know, he, he didn't remember anything about what had happened, but he was starting to come to well, it. So how is yeah. he doing? How is he doing now? 
Well, these blood tests were okay. I got an EKG, which is a rhythm of his heart before we sent him in the ambulance and that looked good. He's in the ICU still, clearly not out of the woods, um, but we're all praying for his recovery. But he's so far way beyond average, right? I mean, he beat the odds in a big way. It is a miracle that he got back with that one pulse and that he's still doing so well. I gotta say that I'm just thinking about this and it's sort of like, you know, this kind of mild-mannered passenger is looking at his baggage claim, and all of a sudden he becomes Superman and starts saving people's lives, and people must have looked and said, oh my God, that's yeah. the guy on TV. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's no good time to have a, a, a heart crisis, a heart, heart attack, or something similar to what this, this gentleman had, but if Dr. Oz is stand, happens to be standing yeah. nearby, that's probably the best time if it's gonna happen. You know, but I gotta say, the, what I, did, I learned my first year of medical school. And I really believe that every single person who can hear my voice right now could learn it and do it just as effectively as me. I mean, all of my training was about doing subtle things inside the chest and you know how to open the sternum without damaging it. You know, the, the ability to do CPR and to keep someone's airway open, so breathe for them, that's basics that you can learn um, in a very short course and you will then be empowered for the rest of your life to save lives. I wanna have you on next week, if you're willing, because now that we're talking about this, there is a test, and I'm, I'm trying to remember what it was. I actually did it. It's a calcium something test that really tells you what's going on with your heart. And a lot of general practitioners don't even advise people to get it. And these stress tests on treadmills, they don't show what's really going on. So would you come on maybe in a week and we'll talk about this? Because this is truly life-saving and, 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 and really your specialty. helps. Yeah, uh, can, can we do that next week maybe? Uh, Harvey, I'd be honored to join you. And the test you're talking about, the calcium score test, it's, yeah. know, they're, they're, they're sophisticated ways of doing this that are non-invasive, pretty straightforward. And I tell you, it's not just to identify if you've got ailments, it's also a very important tool before you start treating people. Because why treat a theory? We can treat reality. Yeah, I, hmm. I'm dying to do this. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry, Thank Mariah you, Carey. Dr. Oz. I'm sorry, Mariah Carey couldn't be here to duly <laughs> honor you, but we did our best. God bless you both. I wish you the best. Take care, my friends. Charles, we're going to have him on next week. This test is unbelievable. Is, I'm telling you, that is great. By the way, just again, shout out to Dr. Oz and to the unnamed to this point Port Authority police officer who stepped up as well to save this man's life. Really, absolutely. Great.